Stimulus Package Update for August 11th. Hey everyone, I'm meet Kevin here. Let's talk stimulus check timing, negotiations, Trump, and more. First, I still have a few lectures to go in the release of the YouTube Make Money From Home course using just your phone. I'm keeping the pre-sale price available because of that until I get those remaining lectures out. And yeah, I talk DSLRs and other cameras as well, not just phones. Uh, but anyway, let's get started on stimulus, on stimulus checks and stimulus timing. House Majority Leader, Steny Hoyer, said that no floor votes on any bill are scheduled until September 14th. Remember, Congress is on recess between now and September 7th, but then they don't even expect to vote on anything for another week thereafter. Now, Steny did state that Congress would return if a deal was reached between the lawmakers who were left at Capitol Hill, which are really just Pelosi, Schumer, Meadows, and Treasury Secretary Mnuchin. But in the meantime, Congress is on recess with no planned votes until September 14th. Keep in mind, we'll likely need at least three weeks from an agreement until we actually see checks hit our bank accounts. That's because we have to go get an agreement. Once the agreement is reached, we have to see a bill that has to get negotiated in the actual terms of the bill and amendments. You get the CBO involved uh, and then you actually pass the bill and sign it. Takes a while. Instead, Congress is busy campaigning. Most lawmakers are back in their district trying to tell everybody to vote for them because they're so good at being Congress. Fortunately though, there is currently agreement between Democrats and Republicans on school funding, $105 billion, stimulus checks, $1,200 and $500, with some details remaining, and uh, PPP funding, also with some minor details remaining, 25% decline in revenue versus 50% decline in revenue. And, but fortunately, a lot has already been negotiated. However, there are some big ticket items that are still lingering. Unemployment, housing assistance, which is like providing actual money to people who are behind on their rent or housing payments who can't take advantage of forbearance or, you know, they're behind on their rent and, oh wait, there is no rental assistance. There is no rent forbearance. It's just uh, maybe an eviction ban that has expired. But anyway, uh, funding for testing, tracing, treatment, housing assistance, unemployment, and funding for state and local governments are all the snags in the cogs of Congress right now. On unemployment, the Labor Department gave us information on the enhanced unemployment. The Labor Department said that individuals will not need to reapply for benefits in order to satisfy their self-certification requirement for the new boost. Instead, the Labor Department will work with states to incorporate the new FEMA requirements into the already existing weekly certification process. So you'll still certify the same way you have been and they'll incorporate the new boost. That's great, but unfortunately we still have some problems. The president's extension of the unemployment, uh, enhanced unemployment payments was not done under the normal unemployment insurance pathways. Instead, it was due through emergency power pathways given to Trump via the Stafford Act and something called the EAA which basically allow FEMA to have more power to help the people. The governor of Philadelphia explained this much more simply and said basically what this means is governors need an entirely new program that states have to establish from scratch and then run alongside existing unemployment programs. So basically you have an existing program, now, now you gotta come up with a new one to follow Donald Trump's executive action. This is expected to delay unemployment payments until likely at least the end of the month. During Trump's press conference yesterday, he also stated that he'd consider waiving the 25% requirement that states contribute to unemployment. Remember, in order for states to get the $400 boost, states have to provide $100 of that to be eligible for the $300 in federal aid. However, Trump said that this would, quote, depend on the governor and the individual state which kind of sounds like the administration could essentially cherry pick which governors and states would be eligible to waive the 25% requirement. This basically means, bottom line, it is going to be entirely up to Donald Trump whether states are going to get $300, $400, or $0 as a boost. Meanwhile, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin believes that the benefit will be available, this enhanced unemployment benefit will be available in about two weeks which two weeks from now is already the end of August, about the 24th to 25th. 
By the way, in a public Discord chat, uh, which you can join, our public Discord chat, uh, somebody posted a, a, a sad message, and I, I wanted to share it with, uh, well, at least uh, the gist of it uh, with all of y'all. Uh, it was really about depression and uh, suicidal thoughts during this time. I gave uh, an extended and supportive response, but I wanted to mention something that I said to all of you, uh, or to everybody in Discord, and I want to mention it to all of you. Nobody is immune from anxiety, stress, and depression, and all of these manifest in ourselves in very different ways. Some people have chest pain, some people have, uh, you know, jaw pain, some people have no pain, but all of us have anxiety and stress exhibit itself and depression in, in different ways. And we tend to all experience waves of all three of these feelings at different times in our lives. And if there's anything that I could suggest, uh, if, if you're struggling right now, it's uh, to do as kind of we're trying to do. Uh, and that is, think of 2020 as year zero. Bring it on 2020. How long will 2020 go on? And how bad will 2020 be? But after 2020, I know that we're going to start the numbers. One, two, three, four, and so on. And I personally believe that once we get past this stupid zero, we're gonna get into much more optimism and happy times. Good times tend to generally follow really bad times. Uh, and that's what I'm optimistic for. And I know it's hard to believe because right now we're at that zero. But uh, stay strong, everyone. Uh, it's a crazy time. Speaking of crazy, Russia approved a vaccine with a few hundred vaccine recipients in trials. Meanwhile, here we are doing phase three trials with tens of thousands of people. Anyway, um, don't sue me, bro, Russia. <laughs> Putin, please. Anyway, uh, this has led to a large rotation in the stock market. Funds, especially hedge funds, are rotating out of the tech safety stocks and into the highly indebted recovery stocks like retail, hospitality, and travel. This sector has been up for three days now at the demise of tech. Concerns over a rising spread for COVID or the rising spread of COVID at schools is also rising. Some are now considering having rapid tests at schools, which would be tests that could tell you if you have COVID within 15 to 20 minutes. Think about it this way. Everybody meet outside the gym, get tested, and once we call your name that you're clear, you can go into school. Abbott Labs rapid test fell under a lot of scrutiny earlier this year, but there are a lot of rapid test uh, software and equipment and devices like uh, Quiddle's Sophia 2. Right now though, these machines cost around $18,000 for a machine and around $50 per test. However, we might expect to see these machine costs drop to around $3,000 and $20 per test, making them a lot more accessible. Now, currently, <laughs> that does also pose the problem of who's going to pay for that all. A high school with 2,000 students would have to pay $40,000 per day just to test every entrant. Also, expect stock and real estate videos later on today in the channel. Let me know what your thoughts are on schools and maybe even hospitality companies and restaurants doing rapid tests. And folks, we will see you all soon. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing, and until next time.